Hey guys, so this video is going to be on surge protection for, or specifically lightning protection for my solar. So I purchased, uh, I was looking back and forth between two different products. So Midnight Solar makes a, a terrific surge protection device for lightning for your PV. Uh, also, they make a, uh, the, uh, one for the AC side of things. And then EMP Shield is another one. So I'm sure there's other ones on the market, but those two stand out. So I went with the EMP Shield after reading up on both of them pretty extensively. So, and I'll leave a description down below on, on this and you can check it out. So specifically for the lightning protection. So uh, there's people that argue back and forth whether you can actually prevent an EMP or uh, you know, shield against one. Uh, in your either your grid panel, they, they make these for your car also, or your PV. So uh, I'll leave it up to other people to argue about that, but they have some pretty good stats on uh, EMP protection, solar flares, and really good ones on lightning. So uh, essentially they shunt or uh, shield the load within like a billionth of a second uh, from affecting your devices. So the surge essentially stops there. So yeah, you can check the link out below when, uh, when I'm finished here, but uh, I opted to put these. So these are actually really simple to install. This is the one for the AC side of things. So this is gonna be different. I'll show you the DC side here in just a minute. So the AC side, other than it being designed for AC, the, the DC will say 600 volts uh, for that. You can get a, a lower voltage one too, but I opted for the 600 volts because of I'm pretty high with my PV voltage, but they have a 600 volt model. But on the AC side of things, you'll see a neutral. So on the DC side, all you'll see is a positive, negative, and a ground. On the AC side, you have a neutral. So both legs are covered for the AC side of things. And I'm gonna be installing this too in my main grid panel here coming up probably, I'm not sure when, but it'll be another video. In this one, I'm only focusing on the PV. So on the PV side of things, on the directions, you can actually combine these with your charge controller. It says in the direction. So you can put your positive and negative in the, the same terminal as your positive and negative on the PV and then tighten it back down. I didn't like that. I, I, I really don't like combining two different uh, strings or two different wires in one terminal where the PV is concerned. So what I ended up doing, and I'll show you here in just a minute, I ended up using some uh, three-way splices, so Polaris type connectors. Uh, and I just have uh, PV in one, the surge protection in the other, and then obviously the entrance or exit there of the PV. So that was a little cleaner, I thought. I ended up putting, or I, I'm going to end up putting them in my combiner boxes because I'm not combining a whole lot in those boxes anymore since I have my voltage running so high. So I already had some kind of rudimentary or the search protection that comes with those combiner boxes. And I've had that since the beginning, uh, but I've just seen so many things recently on people's systems being fried by lightning. And it doesn't have to be a direct strike uh, anywhere in the area really could do it. And I did not want that happening to my system. So I've actually wanted to do this uh, even back when I had my LV6548, the MPP version of the 6500 watt inverters. And I just never got around to it, but I figured it's a sign when I keep seeing more and more things where people's systems are basically being knocked out by lightning. And I didn't want that happening to mine. So like I said, you can combine this directly to a charge controller. The, the, install, the install is really simple. I'll show you uh, what I'm going to do. Uh, you could put, there's enough space in the EG4 uh, 18K PV here where you could, I almost stumbled over the name there. I was going to call it an LV6548 again. Uh, but yeah, the EG4 18K PV, there's actually enough space in the wiring cabinet where I could have put all of my surge protection in there. I just thought it would be a little bit cleaner next to my combiner boxes. So there's a few different options when you install these. You could make a little terminal block for them. Uh, you could just make a little junction box. The point is that you need the uh, positive, the negative, and a ground. So it's got to be spliced into the PV line somewhere before it gets to the inverter. So it's not a hard install at all. 
Uh, and I'll show you here in just a minute, so I'm going to get started. And just to give you guys an idea, in the EG4 18K PV, there's plenty of space that I could put the surge protection devices all in here. Uh, so I would have three of them. It, there's one that's uh, a double. So yeah, it would they would fit in pretty easily. It would just be two, two small boxes in there if I was going to put them in here with the wiring cabinet. And in a smaller inverter like the EG4, the 3000 watt, you can, like I said, in the directions it says, you could go right through here and have the positive, negative, and you could hook to the ground over there if you were going to put surge protection device right at the inverter. So you can do that also. You can put it in the same terminal there. So here's an EMP shield for a dual PV input. So two independent lines can have uh, protection here, lightning protection in my case is why I'm getting this, like I said. So this, uh, there's two different positives, two different negatives, up to 600 volts. So that's plenty for me. I may reach 530, 540 in the cold. So yeah, I'm going to try to run it into the combiner box um, and see how that works. I'm going to check it out here in just a minute. So it's not perfect, so this is what I have here so far. I've still got to mount this the rest of the way here. You could also use metal conduit here. But all of these are running into the combiner box here. So because this is dual PV input, and you have two separate inputs coming in here, but you still want black and red, they've put stripes on here. So the black stripe and red stripe would go together for their one PV input. And the plain red and black would go on the other. And I've already got my ground over there. I got a little overzealous with the crimp, but the, you know, that's just the sheathing there. Uh, the actual crimp is good. Uh, anyway, so far so good on progress. So these are insulated connectors. So Polaris are the most popular, but Morris makes some too. They're a little cheaper. So the PV is going to come in here. And then essentially the PVC is going to go right back where it was. So the path is going to continue the same way it was, my solar wires. The only difference is I'm going to be adding the EMP shield on one leg right here. So it won't interrupt anything. It's just a way to tie it into the line, which is the most important part. So I was able to splice everything in with the connectors. When you see the next combiner box, it might make it easier. But it might look complicated because there's a lot of wires, but it was uh, not hard at all. So each one spliced back in, essentially just continuing it. There, right there, is the lightning protection that comes with the combiner boxes. So that uh, does offer some protection, like I said. Over here, now that I'm finished, you can see both the indicator lights are on, uh, saying that everything is functioning correctly. On another note, you'll see both these lights here means my PV is on. While you're doing this work, I try to throw this in every video that involves PV or electricity as much as I can. While you're working on this, if you're going to be installing one of these, if you're doing any work on your PV lines at all, on anything electrical, do not have it on. Disconnect them before you work on them. I, I know that seems a little redundant. I keep saying stuff like that, but I, I feel the need because you're dealing with high voltage here. Uh, you've got, I think, this string here has 350 volts on it right now. Yeah, that would kill you. So here's the single string version. Same 600 volts DC. You'll just have, obviously, positive, negative, and ground on this one. So I'm gonna hook this up to my single string, the 8,000 watt array. I'm gonna hook it up in the combiner box I have out there in just a minute. So here's the combiner box where I have the solar array built as a roof. And I did the same thing here. So I basically used the combiner box as a junction box for the lightning protection. So here's the lightning protection in the three-way. Here's where it goes into the inverter. That's going through the breaker here. Same over here with the negative. And behind here... I hooked the ground into the ground bar. So same as the inside. And this one's on here also. So it was really simple with these three-way connectors.
very simple. So I hope this was helpful, guys. I wanted to give some ideas on how I did it. And like I said, it just needs to be in line with the TV somewhere. So if you guys can put it into your all-in-one inverters, like the EG4 3000 watt inverter, into the same terminal, that's cool. Or if you uh, put it into your charge controller, if you're running a Victron system, something like that, that works just fine. It just has to be in line with the PV there somewhere. Uh, and not everyone is in a lightning prone area, but it really only takes one strike to ruin your day, or I guess it could be ruin your year or more, depending on the size of your system. So this is a way to have peace of mind and an extra layer of protection. So yeah, I would advise everyone to read up on it. Uh, so like I said, read the stats on the link that I have below. Read up on the Midnight Solar model. But either way, I appreciate you guys watching and stay tuned.